every time I hear that story of the ancient Shambhala prophecy, it sounds current, as though it speaks to this time, the time in which we live. The prophecy tells of a time when the earth is in great peril, a time when great powers have arisen with the wealth and the weapons to annihilate each other. The future of sentient life hangs by a thread. It is a time that calls for people of good faith and courage to act with insight and compassion. I first heard the Shambhala prophecy told by Joanna Macy. Though I can list several teachers who've had a profound impact on my life, Joanna Macy's name always rises to the top of the list. It's been nearly 20 years since I actually sat in a classroom with Joanna, taking in her wisdom as a scholar, her courage as an activist, and her compassionate heart as a spiritual guide. As a scholar of Buddhism, general systems theory, and deep ecology, she has more than five decades of experience interweaving her scholarship with activism and experiential workshops designed to bring about personal and social transformation. The class met for three hours every Monday morning. One hour was spent in intellectual study of systems theories and Buddhist philosophies. One hour was spent in experiential exercises done together as a group. And the third hour was spent in silent meditation, again, together as a group. When that semester ended, I felt raw and exposed. Everything that I thought I knew about myself and my place in the world had fallen away like so much battle armor. From that tender and vulnerable emotional space, something new emerged. I had fallen deeply in love with this achingly beautiful planet, with all of its robustness and all of its fragility. I could no longer see myself as, as separate from the earth and all her creatures. I could only see that I am a part of a dynamic living system, one that is always growing and evolving, that I am both the changer and the changed. Though I had long ago left behind religious narratives centered on personal salvation, and life decisions based solely on what's best for me and mine, I found myself moving what I knew in my head into my heart. The truth of interdependence, interconnection, and the embodiment that salvation is for this life, not the next, and that we are all in this together. My fate is inextricably tied with yours, and yours is inextricably tied with mine. Or as in the words attributed to Chief Seattle, we did not weave the web of life, we are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. Joanna Macy refers to the time in which we live as the great turning. In the course of human history, there have been other turnings that have shaped the way in which we live on this planet. Our current time is one of a great turning, one that is not unlike the agricultural and industrial revolutions of the past. Joanna Macy says that we are in a shift from the industrial growth society to a life-sustaining civilization. She says the shift is happening whether we recognize it or not. The question is whether the turning will happen soon enough so that this planet 
will be livable for human and other complex life forms in the future. The industrial growth society in which we live is based on an economic system that is dependent on accelerating growth. I have another friend who calls the time in which we are living late stage capitalism. <laughs> we measure our success in terms of ever increasing profits, which are in turn dependent on how fast materials can be extracted from the earth and turned into consumer products, weapons, and waste. <laughs> the revolution that is underway is a deep understanding that it doesn't have to be this way. More and more people are realizing that our needs can be met without destroying our world if we are willing to engage the essential adventure of turning toward a life-sustaining civilization. There's three dimensions to the great turning. One dimension involves actions to slow the damage to Earth and its beings. A second dimension involves analysis of structural causes and the creation of structural alternatives. The third dimension involves a shift in consciousness. What's exciting about this great turning is that we're all in it together, and each of our individual actions, choices, and behaviors play a part in bringing about the next evolution of human society on this planet. The dimensions outlined by Joanna Macy align nicely with our Unitarian Universalist principles and values. Human worth and dignity, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, encouragement to spiritual growth, respect for the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part, to name just a few. Our faith community and its rich traditions can be sources of nurture and sustenance as we become more conscious of the great turning and our part in it. The first dimension of the great turning is action. For Unitarian Universalists, action is the way we live our faith in the world. Actions that slow the damage to earth and its beings is the most visible dimension of the great turning. It includes political, legislative, and legal work. It also includes direct action like boycotts, blockades, civil disobedience, and other means of refusal and resistance. So some of the ways that this can be done is documenting the ecological and health effects of the industrial growth society. Lobbying or protesting against the World Trade Organization and the international trade agreements that endanger ecosystems and undermine social and economic justice. Blowing the whistle on illegal and unethical corporate practices blockading and conducting vigils at places of ecological destruction, such as old growth forests under the threat of clear cutting or at nuclear dumping grounds. These and similar actions will slow the destruction and buy us some time. They are necessary, but they are not sufficient to bring about a life-sustaining civilization. The second dimension of the great turning is analysis, and who but Unitarian Universalists would be good at this? We need a deep understanding of the dynamics and the tacit agreements that allow the industrial growth society to exist. To free ourselves and our planet from the damage being inflicted by the industrial growth society, we have to ask some hard questions. Joanna Macy would have us ask, 
What are the tacit agreements that create obscene wealth for a few while progressively impoverishing the rest of humanity? What are the agreements? What interlocking causes indenture us to an insatiable economy that uses our earth as supply house and sewer? The picture isn't pretty. It takes a good dose of courage to look at our current situation with a sense of realism without collapsing into either denial or despair. It can also be empowering to see ourselves as part of a system rather than victims of the system. We are part of the system along with everyone else, which means there is no need to demonize corporate CEOs and politicians who are also in bondage to it. What we can do is demystify the workings of the global economy and see how the industrial growth society is dependent on our obedience to it and how ultimately the industrial growth society is doomed to devour itself. Understanding and dismantling the system still isn't enough. We need to build alternative structures and systems that are life-sustaining. This means not waiting for state and national politicians. We are the ones we're waiting for. It means not waiting for politicians, but banding together and taking action ourselves in our own communities. Through creativity and collaboration on behalf of life, seeds for the future are sown. Some initiatives that Joanna Macy suggests are teach-ins and study groups <coughs> on the Industrial Growth Society, strategies and programs for nonviolent citizen-based defense, reduction of reliance on fossil and nuclear fuels and conversion to renewable energy resources, collaborative living arrangements such as co-housing and eco-villages, community gardens, consumer cooperatives, community supported agriculture, watershed restoration, local currencies. I bet you're doing these things. Does any of this sound familiar? Are you doing any of these things? Probably more than you realize. We're already doing some of them at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Tucson. Solar panels now provide our electricity. And we've contracted with watershed management to correct the erosion on our property caused by the flood last fall. And we'll be working to maximize the natural flow of water on the property to protect structures and to keep our landscaping watered. And here at Mountain Vista UU, you are working on income inequality and local public banking as an alternative to the large corporate banks, keeping money local and out of the hands of the big banks. So these second action dimensions are also necessary, but still not sufficient to bring about the great turning. The third shift is to make a shift in consciousness. We need to learn to think differently. The structural alternatives being put in place can't take root and flourish without deeply ingrained values to sustain them. It's a shift from rugged individualism to radical interdependence. It's a shift in how we perceive reality, a shift that is happening now as both a cognitive revolution and a spiritual awakening. 
It's a shift from understanding the Earth as an inert planet spinning through space to understanding our home, the Earth, as a sacred living system. God incarnate in rock and air and water and plant and animal. A sacred living system of which we are a part. Joanna Macy suggests many ways to become engaged in this third dimension of the great turning. We do this by studying general living systems theory, <coughs> deep ecology, and the deep, long-range ecology movement. By studying creation spirituality and liberation theology, engaged Buddhism and similar currents in other traditions. Embracing the resurgence of shamanic traditions, eco-feminism, eco-psychology, and the Simple Living Movement. You can learn more about any of these by visiting Joanna on the web. Just Google her name. You'll find all kinds of her teachings available. She sums up the importance of this third dimension best when she says, the realizations we make in the third dimension of the great turning save us from either succumbing to panic or paralysis. They help us resist the temptation to stick our heads in the sand or to turn on each other for scapegoats on whom to vent our fear and our rage. The times in which we live call us to be warriors, to develop peaceful weapons of compassion and insight. The times in which we live call us to have our hearts broken open by the harsh realities of suffering that is caused when we forget that we are intricately woven into the living, breathing system that is our home, the earth. We need courage to turn away from indifference, callousness, and greed. We need the will to turn toward each other in the spirit of love, cooperation, and interdependence. We are the ones we've been waiting for. May we make it so. Amen and blessed be.